very good morning students so today we are taking up our next animal which is the tinea solium now here it should be written in italics so you all know this and the common name for tinea solium is the pork tapeworm so pork is the meat of the pigs so mainly the tinea solium it proliferates it completes its life cycle with the help of the pig as the pig is a host for the tinea solium so that's why we call it as the pork tapeworm now if you take a look on the common name the tapeworm you can very well connect it with the diagram that you are seeing so that is a ribbon like structure so if you see the body of the tinea solium it is ribbon like and this is a very long body and tinea solium can go up to a length of 5 meters so that means this is a very very long kind of parasite that is present in it may be present in humans yes so tinea solium is a endoparasite which is present in man and uh, it has been seen in studies that only one tinea solium it grows inside the body of the man there are rare cases that two tinea solium they grow in a single person so that will be a very devastating kind of a condition if you have got two tinea solium in your body but commonly only one tinea solium it grows inside the body of a single human being so now we know that it is a pork tapeworm it is uh, the pork that means the pig that is a host for this particular animal the tinea solium and third thing that we know about it that it is a very long ribbon like animal it is having you can very well see it is having some body segments so this is a particular segment and these segments they are called as proglottids so segments are called as proglottids so I'll be taking up the body structure in the later on slides so tinea solium is an endoparasite it belongs to the phylum platyhelminthes that means the flat worms and these are living inside the host so let us see that how the life cycle goes on and what is the structure of the tinea solium so here in this particular lecture we are emphasizing much on the structure of tinea solium that what is the structure and what is the morphology of this particular animal now students if we go with the, the morphology of tinea solium you can see the actual picture of this particular animal this is a whole long body of the tinea solium so once it was found in a pigeon in our college that when we dissected one pigeon its whole abdomen was full of this particular animal this parasite the tinea solium and this is a ribbon like structure this is whitish in color milky white in color and you can very well see this is this part of the tinea this is called as the scolex so as we refer to it as head sometimes but the head is not the appropriate term for this particular part of the animal so here we call it as scolex and after scolex we have got a single segmented neck so we have got a scolex which is very comparable to the head then we have a single segmented 
neck then we have the whole body so this is the whole body of the animal so this whole body is called as the strobila strobila s t r o b i l a so we will be taking on later in the coming slides these are the three basic parts of the body of the tinea solium so why i have taken this particular diagram that you can very well see the scolex so this is the most important part in the body of the tinea solium uh, when the attachment is concerned when you are taking into consideration the attachment of tinea solium scolex is the major part okay now if we take up the next slide this is again the tinea solium but this is not uh, 5 meters long it is uh, i think near about to 1 meter in length so students in this particular diagram you can again see the scolex this is the neck and this is the whole body of the tinea and this will be the strobila and this is the very end of the body so these are all the segments of the body you can very well see the segments this is a single segment this is again a single segment so that was overall the body structure of the tinea solium now in this particular diagram you can very well see the structure of the pork tape form or the tinea solium so students first of all we have the first part of the body as the scolex so the body of the tinea solium is divided into three major parts the first part is the scolex so we will be taking up the scolex in the coming slides and i'll be showing you the electron micrographs of this particular part of the body the scolex now this scolex this is the first part and then we have the second part as the neck neck is the second part of the body and this neck is a single segmented part it is single segment in length and that this is the smallest part of the body this is the second part and third part is the strobila so here it is not mentioned you can write s t r o b i l a so this is the third part which is the body of the tape form and this strobila you can very well see it is segmented so this is a single segment of the strobila and this segment is called as proglottid so this is a proglottid this is a single segment and if you see it carefully the body of the tinea it is further divided into three parts so first part is the immature proglottids immature immature means new proglottids now why they are immature there is a very beautiful story behind this so it goes like that the neck this is the part which is responsible for the development of all the segments of the body so whenever this tinea solium it first of all enters the human it is only up to this level so that means when you will eat the pork or you will eat the pig's meat only the scolex and the neck these two parts will enter into the human and all the segments of the body of the tinea they are made by the neck 
so neck divides itself and make new segments behind it so that means if the neck it divides into two and makes a new segment it again divides it makes a new segment it again divides it makes a new segment that means the old segments will be pushed backwards and the new segments are behind the neck so that means these are the new segments and the old segments are on the back so these are all the old segments you can say it as the old proglottids so these are the old proglottids these are the new proglottids new means immatures so that's why we have three categories of segments the first category is immature proglottids second category is of mature proglottids after immature we have got the mature proglottids and third we have the here it is not written but you can write it as old proglottids or these are the gravid proglottids so here one thing you can write in your copies that the immature proglottids these are the first 200 segments of the body so they are nearly 200 segments behind the neck they are immatures now why they are called as immatures because they are sexually immature they have not developed the testes or the ovaries so as the neck is developing these proglottids so still they don't have any testes or ovaries in them so after immatures they become mature so then we have the mature proglottids so mature refers to the presence of the testes and the ovaries now here the mature proglottids are further divided into two types these are the male mature and the hermaphrodite mature proglottids so here one thing should be very clear that the anterior matures which are lying behind the immatures they are the male matures so that means first of all you have the immature proglottids then you have the male kind of matures then you have the hermaphrodite kind of matures so there is a difference between male and hermaphrodite so first of all the testes they develop inside the segments so there is a word which is called as protendry protendry refers to the formation of the male organs first so that means the immature proglottids will develop testes in this segment so first of all the testes will be made and those will be male matures only testes they will be having and after they are pushed backwards they become hermaphrodite that means they also develop ovaries in them so they had testes before and then they develop the ovaries then they become the hermaphrodite matures so that means now we have the immature proglottids first of all then we have the male matures then we have the hermaphrodite matures when the mature proglottids they are further pushed back then after some time they become old ones so old proglottids they are present at the hind end at the very last of the body of the tinea so they are also called as the gravid proglottids 
so the gravids they are the last 150 to 350 proglottids of the body so if we take the last near about 300 segments they are the gravid proglottids so that means they are the old proglottids and if we talk about the mature ones if we talk about first of all the male matures these are near to 450 in the body so these are the mature proglottids so 450 they are the mature proglottids now out of these 450 near to 150 are male matures and the rest of the 200 or 250 they are the hermaphrodite mature so that means the first 200 segments they are the immatures then you have 150 male matures then you have 250 hermaphrodite matures and then you have the last 300 segments as gravid proglottids so these are the three major parts of the body of the tinea solium so if we recall back the whole body structure of the tinea first of all we have the scolex second we have the neck and third body part is the strobila now this strobila or the body of the tinea has got again three parts the first segments the first part is the immature proglottids and second part is of the mature proglottids and mature is again divided into male and hermaphrodite and whereas the third part it is the gravid proglottids so students that was the overall structure of the tinea solium now we are considering only the scolex of the tinea solium first of all now if we consider scolex it has got four suckers so this is a very very important point it has got four suckers so these suckers are at about 90 degrees to each other so that means one sucker is towards you one is on the right side one is on the left side and one sucker is behind on the ventral side so that you are not seeing so that means it has got four suckers and these suckers they help in the attachment so they don't have any kind of mouth in it so these suckers are only for the attachment of this worm in the intestine of the man now where this particular tinea solium is present this is present in the intestine of the man now these suckers they help in the anchorage or you can say the attachment of this worm to the intestinal wall now after the suckers the second thing which helps in the attachment these are the chitinous hooks so these hooks these help in attachment so in the coming slides we'll be seeing the hooks very clearly and we'll be seeing the arrangement of the hooks so this is the structure of the scolex so scolex is altogether a round ball like structure it is having four suckers on four sides and it is having hooks so the basic function of the scolex is to anchor is to attach this particular worm inside the intestine of the man students this photograph is showing you the scolex part of the tinea solium so this part is the scolex of the tinea and this scolex this is in the previous slide we have discussed that this is helping in the anchorage or the attachment 
so can you see the hooks so these are the hooks which are present inside tinea this particular segment is the neck and this neck is called as the zone of growth it is also called as the zone of proliferation it is also called as the zone of division so this is the particular segment which is responsible for the formation of whole of the body of tinea so it is forming all the segments of the body by division by multiplication so that means this is the most important important part as for the development of the tinea is concerned and scolex is most important part as for the attachment of this animal is concerned these are the segments and these are the immature segments which are newly formed by the neck by the division of the neck so if we go by the next slide it is also showing you the suckers and these are the hooks but this is not tinea solium this is tinea saginata this is a different species but in the next slide we'll be talking about we'll be seeing the tinea solium so if we talk about the hooks these are the hooks of the original tinea solium so students this is the scolex of the tinea solium and here you can very well see the presence of the four suckers so do not confuse that why these four suckers are present on a single side actually this particular photograph has been taken in a condition where the body has been made transparent so these two suckers these two suckers are present on the back side so these are the four suckers and if you see the hooks these are present in two rows this is the upper row and this is the lower row so hooks are present in two rows now the second diagram is again showing you the geometry of the tinea hooks so if you see the attachment of the hook to the scolex now all these hooks these are attached to a particular plate like structure so this is a plate like structure and this plate like structure is called as the rostellum so this is the rostellum and rostellum is the plate like structure over which the hooks are embedded on to the scolex so on the rostellum we have got two rows of the hooks this is the upper row this is the first row and this is the lower row so this is uh, one hook of the lower row of the hooks so that means we have got the scolex we have got two rows of hooks and one thing is very very important the hooks of the upper row these are large in size so these hooks they are larger in size as compared to the hooks of the lower row so this is the difference between the size of the hooks so there can be like 20 to 32 hooks over one tinea solium so their number can go up to 32 now secondly if you see the suckers so this is a single sucker of tinea solium this is the second sucker 
other two suckers are present on the other side so this is the arrangement of the hooks and the arrangement of the suckers on the scolex of tinea solium if we go by this diagram in the very center you can see the rostellar plate or the rostellum so this is the plate in which the hooks are attached and this is a particular hook this is the hook of the upper row so this is a single hook so this is a scanning electron micrograph of the scolex from the top end of the tinea solium so students you can very well see this is a sucker this is a single sucker on one side and this is the second sucker this is the third sucker and here we have the fourth sucker so i think you are very much clear about the structure of the scolex and the body of the tinea solium so that was all about the structure of tinea thank you very much